Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. Welcome back to another episode of the SEO.co podcast. Today, we're going to kick off a new series, What is a Link Exchange? And are link exchanges safe for SEO in 2021? If you're new to the world of link building or just haven't tried this particular practice yet, then this is a perfectly valid question that may come to mind. The short answer to the question is, a link exchange is an agreement between two sites to share and exchange links with each other for mutual benefit. We know that sounds pretty basic, so we'll dive into it a great deal more so that everything is clear. While link exchanges may seem cut and dry on the face of it, there's actually a whole range of benefits, concerns, and flat-out risks associated with link exchanges, the process, and how many to use. To help you understand much more about what link exchanges are, how they're used, the Google policies surrounding them, and the best practices when engaging in them, we've put together a guide to try and cover as much of it as possible to make sure you get the most out of your link exchanges without risking the ranking, popularity, or trustworthiness of your practice. When building links for your site, the goal is to seek out reputable and authenticated sites to backlink to in order to share your content with them and theirs with you. This helps to organically generate traffic to your site, improve your ranking on Google, as referral traffic is a valuable metric, and improve your reputation as a business. This can be done in quite a few ways, from sourcing content on social media to having guest posts done that are then shared by others, to finding broken links and replacing them with new and fresh ones. A link exchange is one way to acquire great links for link building. It is essentially an agreement between your site and another party to share with each other. Sounds great, right? Mutual benefit for all? The truth is that these agreements function much like any other agreement out there. They are reliant on both parties to fulfill their end of the bargain. This can be a problem when one site is merely attempting to piggyback off of another's work. If you think of it like getting a roommate, you expect the roommate to pay their portion of the rent, respect your boundaries, and clean up after themselves. Only after the first couple of months, the common areas are a mess, they keep stealing your stuff, and they never pay their half of the rent and always claim, I'm good for it. This is the problem with link exchanges. If you enter into one for the sole purpose of link building, you may find the relationship to not only not be beneficial, but be downright detrimental to your site in the first place. There are also issues with Google and policies on link abusing and other issues that we'll get into, but for now, let's talk about how to prevent a bad link exchange. As we talked about in the beginning, all link building efforts should be done with the intent to improve the traffic to your site. Simply adding backlinks willy-nilly will do nothing but overpopulate your page and eventually send up red flags to Google. Even though we were talking about bad agreements between exchange partners, there are other things to look out for as well. There are millions of sites on the web, and forming a link exchange with lots of them would likely be as simple as contacting the domain admin and asking, but that doesn't mean that's what you should do. The first thing to consider is that whatever you want to backlink to is relevant, informative, and beneficial to your users. Linking to a list of your favorite restaurants in Denver isn't going to help your business when you sell boating accessories. Maybe if your customers are hungry and live in Denver, but we doubt that much of your traffic fits that description. Instead, focus on relevancy first. There are many ways to do this. Using indexes, RSS feeds, social media, Q&A forms, and other spaces to find information and links that are relevant to your business will help you with getting the link building part of the process rolling. Once you have loads of relevant links, use a content management system to get and keep it all organized. Having subdividers that specify content niche and other factors can help as well. You'll want to keep this list updated as you go along because link building is an ongoing process. Out of all the hundreds or even thousands of links, your next big goal is to determine which ones are the most relevant and the most reputable. Being off on either of these factors means a link that is no good to you or your business. The purpose of link building is to share your content and link to other content that has a reputation for being high quality, useful, and factual content that helps with user engagement. Linking to irrelevant content is bad, but linking to low quality content that can't be trusted, no matter how relevant, is even worse. Once you've narrowed down your list even further by doing this, you now have a list of viable link exchange candidates. Highly respectable sites that produce great content are the ideal exchange candidates. 
There are no guarantees in life, but it's easier to trust someone with a good reputation who has things together than one who doesn't and is known for not being on the up and up. We've talked about how to avoid a bad link exchange, but that leaves us what to look for in a good link exchange. Just like we talked about, the first things to consider are reputation and trustworthiness. These are things you can find out by visiting the site and looking at user feedback. Users will tell you straight away if a site is trustworthy or not by their comments and reactions to posts. Once this is established, you can begin to move on to other metrics. Site rating and traffic are next on the list of considerations. You want to partner with a site that has a similar rating to yours and has similar traffic expectations. If these numbers are close or slightly greater, then you can accurately predict how much traffic to expect to get from the link exchange. Exchanging with a site that has a lower authority rating, site rank, or poor traffic will not benefit you as much as they. None of these numbers are set in stone, mind you, but it gives you a baseline metric to go off when experimenting with link exchanges and trying to build outbound links. The next thing to look at before entering into a link exchange is what they're offering you. This includes the placement of your links, how many, and whether they have good content quality when you land on their site. Authoritative and trustworthy doesn't always mean that everything is high quality or that where your links will go will be as high quality. You may also want to consider whether they advertise link exchanges. This can be a difficult thing to get a read on. Some sites may advertise link exchanges due to their high volume of traffic and high quality content. Others though may be advertising in an attempt to shirk the responsibility of their site off onto others. Be cautious if a site advertises link exchanges a little too heavily. Another indicator of exchange success is the number of outbound links a site has and whether or not those links are to trusted and authoritative sites. If they're employing dozens of links to other sites and many of them are of poor or average quality, then it may be a good idea to steer clear, no matter how promising the partnership sounds. Your ideal partner will feature your link in a good spot, where it will likely be seen on a high quality page that gets good traffic. They will also not have so many outbound links that yours is likely to get lost in a sea of other content. The reverse is also true. Being a good partner means providing good visibility on high quality content that people will actually gravitate towards. And that's all we've got for this episode. Join us next time as we continue this series as we dive right into Google and the Link Exchange. Thanks again for listening to the SEO.co podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.